Hi, it's Michael from DNA here, and in the next few minutes, you're just going to get an overview of the differences between mind mapping on paper, which you may already be used to, and mind mapping on a computer. Now, to understand why you might want to use a computer to do mind mapping, it's worth thinking about why it can also be a good idea to mind map on paper as well. So, why mind map using paper? Well, let's have a think about the pros and the cons. Well, firstly, it's very immediate, and this can be a very useful thing if you're seeking out support in relation to dyslexia or dyspraxia. A lot of students I've worked with have said that they get distracted quite easily, and they find the computer interface a little overwhelming at first. So there's a lot to be said for grabbing some coloured pens, grabbing a sheet of paper, and just diving in, trying to get all of your ideas down, trying to achieve a state of flow before you start thinking about the structure in your map. Also, you have a real sense of control if you're doing something on paper. So if you find it difficult to organize your thoughts in a linear way and you're trying to structure uh, an essay plan, for instance, it can be really useful to use diagrams and color and doodles and very personal things that are going to help you to break down the content you need to talk about. And also, if you're in a group meeting with uh, friends at university or school, it can be really useful to create collaborative mind maps as well. And that's a really good way to get the group thinking and to get a nice colourful easy to digest note which you can all come back to so you can remember the things that you were talking about in that meeting. However there can be some frustrating things about mind mapping on paper especially if you're trying to embrace this strategy in relation to your own experience of dyslexia. Firstly it can be that your ideas are so complex that you quite literally run out of paper and stuff starts getting squeezed into the side piece of paper and that can be really frustrating when you know that you still have more to add to your map. Also you might have started doing a mind map and then halfway through realized that one of the branches is in totally the wrong place. Now this can be really frustrating because it means you have to scrub that out or it means that you might even have to start doing your map again from the beginning. And also it might just be that your map has become overwhelming. You've just got too much written down on the map. There are too many words staring at you. It's difficult to make sense of it. You can't hide those bits that you don't want to look at because you want to concentrate on a specific part of your map. Busy mind maps can get distracting. Now I'm certainly not saying that you shouldn't use paper to create your mind maps, but it is worth trying out different software packages as an alternative because there's a lot of flexibility in the way that they can help you to arrange your ideas for essays or to create mind maps to help you revise and that's what we're going to be covering in the next few videos.